Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm doing another Amazon video. If you haven't seen my first one where I talked about the pros and cons of working at Amazon, go ahead and click that card right there or go down in the link in the description below. But yeah, with that being said, today we're gonna be doing a different kind of Amazon video. So today I'm gonna be giving five tips for new employees, some things that I kind of wish I knew before I started and yeah, just overall tips that'll help your experience with working at Amazon. And yeah, so I've been working here for about 10 months now. I started working in July of 2020. It is now almost May of 2021, so about 10 months. I'm gonna hit that year mark really soon. And there's a lot of things that I've learned over the time here at Amazon. So I'm gonna be going ahead and sharing that experience with you guys and letting you know, you know, the whole ins and outs of working at Amazon, some tips. So my first tip that I would give is mainly for like inbound workers. I'm not sure if outbound workers really deal with this too much, but for inbound workers, specifically for stowers, pickers, counters, all of that. My, my big advice, and pretty much anyone who's been working at Amazon for a while will also tell you this, don't worry about your rate too much. So basically what your rate is, is the speed that you're working at and how many items per hour that you're doing. So we have these things called units per faces, units per hour, all these things. Basically what your unit per hour is, is how fast you're scanning or how many out, how many units per hour that you're scanning. So in Stowe specifically, you have to scan an item and put it into a bin. And so let's say you do like a hundred of those per hour, that'll be your units per hour will be a hundred. And you also have tack time, which is basically kind of like the speed that you're doing it at. They want you to hit like, they basically want you to hit like a 9.0 tack time. That's kind of the area around where they want you to be. But I'll tell you that right now, like, don't worry about that. And they'll tell you these things are extremely important and they'll continuously say that over and over and over. And especially during your training, they'll push it to you like this is extremely important. You really, really need to, you know, focus on your tack time and make sure it's really, really low. It needs to be like nine seconds, eight seconds, seven seconds. They'll tell you that over and over, but I'm here to tell you, don't worry about those things. Work at your own pace and work as you know, don't, don't be lazy, like actually work hard still, but don't worry about hitting nine seconds, even if you're like at 15 seconds, because it's not really gonna be, you're not gonna be able to do the same exact amount of time that they want you to do every single day, because your time heavily relies on the items that you're getting. If, the, if a truck just unloaded a bunch of really big items, it's really impossible to get a really, really low tack time and a low units per hour or a high units per hour it's, it's just basically, it's really hard to get good numbers when you have really big items. And I'll tell you from experience, about 75% of the time of working at Amazon, I've had big items. And so most of the time, my attack time is like really, really high. Like sometimes it's like 17, 18. There's been times where I've ended the shift with like 25. Like it's been really, really high at times. The tag times is what's gonna be the most important that they're gonna you know try and tell you, hey, you really, really need to fix these tag times. They're gonna tell you that. They're also gonna tell you some other things, but I'm just here to tell you, don't worry about it. Just work at your own pace. Don't overwork yourself, you know, work at your own pace, do well. And the only way you'll ever get in trouble is if you fall in the bottom 5%. Now, if you fall in the bottom 5%, there's a possibility that you can get written up. If you do fall in the bottom 5%, I've only had that happen one time where I did. And it's because I kept, like I was basically running out of work a lot. Like I had basically no work for the entire shift. So the next day, and they'll always, the mo for the most part, they'll talk to you the next day after you've had like a bad day at stowing, or if you haven't like met their standards, they'll come and talk to you the next day at work. And yeah, the next day I told them, you just gotta, t like if you had a really, really rough day because of the mix, you have to tell them like, hey, my mix was bad, blah, blah, blah. I couldn't work as fast as I usually can. And usually they'll excuse it. But like, I, like I'm trying to, basically what I'm trying to say is like, for the most part, don't worry about your rate work at your own pace and yeah, they're gonna say, they're basically gonna try and tell you like you're gonna get in trouble if you don't work hard, if you don't do best as possible, but it's not true. As many, many times as I've had a really bad rate, nothing's really happened. Like they come and talk to you, you explain why your rate was so low and they watch you for a little bit, they watch you still. Usually, usually for me, they're like, oh, you did good. So I guess what you were saying yesterday was pretty true, so basically don't worry about your rate you'll be fine they're going to stress this out to you a lot that it's a really really bad thing if you have a low rate don't worry about it just work at your own pace my second tip is for a lot of lazy people out there because i know a lot of lazy people do this and just people who have overall stress from the work place in general which is understandable is save your time off so four times a year you get this thing called upt which is unpaid personal time and this is for people who are blue badges people who have been hired on permanently you can build up to 80 hours per year. My advice here is to just save that time. And you also get PTO and vacation time, save all of those times. There's a lot of people that I've seen 
who waste all their time as soon as you get it. Like you get some on January 1st, April 1st. Uh, there's another month. There's two other months that you get it. I can't remember them right now, but you get them every couple of months. You get 20 more hours. And there's people who will get them and literally not go to work because they got those hours. They'll take, like you'll get 20 hours and they'll use all the 20 hours as soon as you get it. Don't be one of those people. Save your time off because you never know when you're gonna get like a flat tire or when you're going to work and something happens or you wake up late and you missed a couple of hours. Just any like any crisis that may happen that it will stop you from going to work and maybe you get sick or something, save your time off. So many people see their time off as a way to just waste it all in one day or waste, or waste it all in one week and then they'll be riding on the next couple of months with no time off and they'll have to go to work and if they don't go to work, you know what, you'll be fired because you will be fired if you go negative UPT. Again, you start off with 20, you can get up to 80 per year and if you ever go below zero on your UPT, you'll get instantly fired. So be careful with that. Save your time. Do not waste your time. A lot of people just love to waste all their UPT and PTO immediately. It's not smart. Don't do it. Please save your time. That is one suggestion that I really, really want to push to you guys is please save your time. Don't be one of those people who waste their time all at once and then they're sitting on thin ice for the rest of the time they're at work until they get their next UPT fill. And then my third tip, which kind of goes hand in hand with the first one is don't overwork yourself. The reason I say this is because you get no benefit from working super hard. You get no accomplishments, no achievements. They don't give you anything other than like self-fulfillment basically. You pretty much get nothing. You don't get a raise. You don't get any type of, you just don't get anything for working super, super hard. Like I've been working here for a while and I've worked, there's been days where I just worked super, super hard because I felt like it and I did really, really good that day and I got super, super high like ratings and my tack time was super, super low, which is a really great thing. Like I've had like a 7.0 tack time and done really really well and it, at the end of the day like it amounted to nothing i didn't get any achievements nobody came and say hey you did a good job yesterday you you're you're stowing really good would you like like a raise or anything like that like that doesn't happen here at amazon so don't overwork yourself it won't be for any reason you're going to be getting paid as the same dude who's doing absolutely like nothing basically so don't overwork yourself work yourself at an average pace i saw somebody on the reddit say this like this is like one of the only times you ever want to shoot for average at best. Like in many times of life, you want to shoot for your best. You want to aim for your best and do your best in life. But for this job, this is one of the jobs where you just want to aim for average. Like just go bang average. Don't worry about overworking yourself because at the end of the day, when you're working those 10 or 12 hour shifts, you're just going to be sitting there so stressed and just tired basically. And you don't want to do that. Just work average, just work average. And yeah, you'll be fine. Don't overwork yourself because it's not worth it. And you won't get anything in an event. You won't get anything for it. My fourth tip is wear comfortable clothing. Right now I'm wearing just this regular shirt that I got from the thrift shop and some joggers, some black joggers. I'll show you guys just regular black joggers, like sweatpants basically. And if I were to get called into work right now, like if, I mean, that wouldn't happen because it's a Monday and I can't, but if that were to happen, I would be able to just go to work like this. Um, my advice is just dress comfortable. Don't dress like super, super tight clothing or something uncomfortable. Uh, wear comfortable shoes because you will be on your feet for 10, 12 hours, depending on which shift you choose. So yeah, definitely make sure that you choose comfortable clothes. Make sure you're wearing nice clothes that, you, that you're, you'll be good in working in. You don't have to wear any wear jeans. You don't have to work still toads like any of those. At least at my location, you don't. Just you know, wear what's comfortable with for you because if you go in wearing something uncomfortable, you might get hot or you just might not feel good and you're gonna be there for a long time. You're gonna be there for about 11 to 12 hours. So during that time, you wanna be dressed comfortably. You wanna, you feel, you wanna feel good, so go ahead and dress comfortable. Wear what you want. A lot of people on the Amazon Reddit were stressing a lot that you need to you need to wear good, comfortable shoes because if you're not wearing comfortable shoes, your, your legs, your feet are not gonna thank you for that. Your back's not gonna thank you for that. So dress comfortable. And my last tip for today, this one is something that I've been dealing with a lot lately and I wish that I really, really wish that I would have known before I started working here is don't be afraid to say no. And what I mean by that is if you're doing a position that you don't mind or that you actually enjoy and stuff like stowing, I don't mind stowing. I actually enjoy stowing. It's fine to me. A lot of people hate it, but I don't mind it. So what I mean is if you're doing these positions that you don't mind and that you don't want to expand out of, just they're going to ask you, well, possibly they might eventually ask you, do you want to switch positions? Do you want to do water spider? Do you want to go work on the dock? They might ask you these things. 
my thing is just don't be afraid to say no because I made the mistake of doing water spider like once and after that because I, I did they asked me and I was like uh, like I don't, I'd feel bad for saying no and not only that I've never done water spider before so I was pretty curious to see how it was so I was like yeah I'll just do it and I freaking hated it water spider is literally I think one of the worst position. No, that water spider is the worst position to do in a, a fulfillment center. It's either that or working out on the dock. But water spider is terrible. And ever since that day that I said yes, just because I wanted to try it out, they have never ever stopped asking me. They asked me like, like a couple of weeks. They they took a break for asking me for a little bit after that. But then they asked me again, and that's when like everyone found out. Like, yo, this guy knows how to do water spider because a lot of people don't know how to do water spider for some reason. But once they find out you know how to do another position, they're gonna keep asking you. So my thing is, don't be afraid to say no because I wish I would have said no in the beginning because now they always ask me to do water spider. I usually stow, like this past week, I went a whole week with just stowing, which was the first time in a long time. But the week prior to that, I water spidered all week and I hated it, hated it, hated it. It's been a big problem lately because I think a lot of water spiders quit or a lot of people that wore like permanent full-time water spiders decided like, I just don't want to do water spider anymore. I can't do this. Just let me stow or something. So a lot of them don't do water spider anymore. So they've been needing more people to do it. And they asked me and just, it, it's honestly not been good. I wish that I had said no. And my advice for you is just, if, if you don't feel comfortable doing something, just say no, because if you keep saying yes, there will be a point where you basically can't say no, where you, like they've asked you so many times and it's just like, if you say no, they're gonna be like, well, why? You always do it, why not? So my, my, my last tip here on the fifth one is just, just say no. I made this mistake and I really, really wish I can go back and say no, I don't wanna do water spider. But now I'm dealing with the backlash from that and yeah, it sucks. I, I hate water spidering so much, but I think I'm at the point now where I've gotten so tired of it and it's so mentally draining that I'm always gonna say no from now on. So that's my tip is just say no. Don't worry, you can't, it's not like you can get fired or anything for saying, for not doing something that you don't feel comfortable doing. So don't worry about it, just say no. And with that being said, those are my five tips. Again, I'll run through them really quickly. Don't worry about your rate, save your time off, don't overwork yourself, wear comfortable clothing, and don't be afraid to say no. Those are my five tips for new employees at Amazon. If you are at Amazon, welcome to the team and subscribe down below. I do make Amazon related videos. If you haven't seen my first one, of course, click on the description below or the card that I posted earlier. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end that there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments, comment down below. Any questions or anything like that, just comment them down below. Leave a like on this video and subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Love you all, peace out.